Yes. Yes. We all said that on today. Everybody had a testimony of just who God is and what he's done. And he is the great I am in the name of Jesus. So let yes. us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this time, oh God, just to come into your presence. Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father God, we bless your holy and righteous name for you're worthy and deserving to be praised, magnified, yeah. and to be lifted up. And Father God, on today, I decrease so that you, the greater God in me, can increase, oh God. Speak to the hearts and the minds of your people, Lord God, and let this word, Father God, penetrate in the name of Jesus, that as we go, Father, from faith to faith and from glory to glory, recognizing who you are in our going, God, we praise you on this morning because you're worthy, oh God, and all things are working out for our good and for your glory. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 trying to shut you down. I was just saying you was in my message, but you didn't have to stop talking. Oh, no, God, you God. was telling the truth. God, no. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing today? Good. Yes. 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 Praise be to God. Good. Good. I believe Amen. that this message is going to be how would you say the prerequisite of this week of services and what God is getting ready to do Amen. here at Greater New Hope. Amen. He has a way of proving himself always. Yeah. All right. Okay. One second. I got a little carried away with that song. I love that song. It speaks bountifully. So on last week, I did want to go back to Apostle Ann's message when she was talking about Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and all this week, that's all I've been hearing in my spirit is the story of Humpty, Humpty Dumpty, which we know is a fictional story about an egg, so to speak, where they said it was an egg on the wall. So. I did as Apostle Ann did, and I looked up the story myself because I wanted to see what the origin of it was. And the story actually originated in Alice in Wonderland. There was a story that was called Through the Looking Glass. And I just want to read you this because I found this very amusing. As I was reading it, um, Alice is talking to Humpty, who is on the wall. She says, my name is Alice, but it's a stupid name enough, Humpty Dumpty interrupted impatiently. What does it mean? Must a name mean something? Alice asked doubtfully. Of course it must, Humpty Dumpty said with a short laugh. My name means the shape I am. And I didn't even know that was wow. there. I didn't even know that. I played that song, but I didn't know. I, I didn't really read this. I kind of copied and pasted it. But he said, my name means the shape I am, and a good handsome shape it is too. <laughs> With a name like yours, you might be any shape, almost. Why do you sit out here all alone, said Alice, not wishing to begin an argument. Why, because there's nobody with me, cried Humpty Dumpty. Hmm. Did you think I didn't know the answer to that? Ask another. Don't you think you'd be safer down on the ground? Alice went on, not with any idea of making another riddle, but simply in her good-natured anxiety for the queer nature, that wall is so very narrow. Mm -hmm. She already had said to him, you sit on that wall, but you're really not in any shape to be up there because of the shape yeah. of your body. She wasn't being insulting, she was telling the truth. Yeah. 
but Humpty was a little bit angry. And y'all need to go read that story because it was I found it quite amusing. I just read the first portion of it and I really got blown away by it. I was like, wow, this is because in school, when we studied stuff like that, we didn't really get a chance to really get into it. When you become an adult, you see another whole side of something that really they try to teach you in school, but you can look at this thing from a spiritual perspective because Humpty was a little bit rude. Yeah. He was very arrogant. And he 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 kind of you know he kind of got a little intimidated, so Alice noticed that for the shape he was, the wall was not a good place for him to be sitting. sitting on, yeah. So they go on with a long conversation, going back and forth with one another as Alice is making conversation. But Humpty again is rude and a bit arrogant. Hence the scripture Proverbs sixteen and eighteen: Pride goes before destruction, yeah, no. and a haughty spirit before a fall. And this is a warning, actually, by Solomon to all those who are proud in the worst way. And Solomon probably was talking about his father, David, and uh, King Saul, because King Saul was very, very arrogant, yeah. and he was very haughty. And David kind of picked up on, because King Saul was his leader, he took on some of those attributes from his leader and became that way, even when he slept with Bathsheba and some of the stuff that David did was kind of something that he picked up from his leader who was Saul. Hmm. So the character Humpty Dumpty is also depicted as King Richard III, I read of, uh, <coughs> he was from England. He was defeated during his reign at the Battle of, of Bosworth Field in 1845. They said he was round in body shape and he had a hump in his back, which could be the appearance of an egg, the egg that sat on the wall, hump over trying not to fall as he talked to Alice some way some say he was pushed or whatever over the years has made the story more interesting. We always blame the fall on the character itself. But what if the wall was damaged? Or crooked? Or defective? Or needed to be repaired? What if it wasn't humped at all? What if it was the wall? So I kind of took that story that she's been, and I'm telling you, it stuck with my spirit all, but it spoke so many different ways about how we see things as a people of faith. So I'm going to go to the book of Nehemiah, and everybody knows the story of Nehemiah. The title of my message is Reverse the Curse. Stay on the wall. Again, reverse the curse. Stay on the wall. So in Nehemiah, the first chapter, verses three through five, I'm going to call out a lot of scriptures. If somebody can grab them when I'm calling them so we can read them as we go. In Nehemiah 1, verses 3 through 5, we see Nehemiah, as he hears the news of the walls of Jerusalem and their condition, he wept and mourned for days. He fasted and prayed before God and inquired of God what he needed to do. Nehemiah 1, 3 through 5. Can I have a reader? Uh, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Achia. Just verse 3. 3 through, oh, okay. 3 through 5. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. And he said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates therefore thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, this verse 5, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Amen. Praise God. The next one is going to be Nehemiah 2, 12 through 16. While you're getting that, I want to read this because this is the uh, Living Bible. It's paraphrased. And it kind of speaks a little bit more clear. It says, well, they replied, things are not good. The wall of Jerusalem is still torn down. The gates are burned. When I heard this, I sat down and cried. In fact, I refused to eat for several days, for I spent the time in prayer to the God of heaven. Oh, Lord God, I cried out. How great and awesome God who keeps 
his promises and is so loving and kind to those who love and obey him. Hear my prayer. So Hanani has come to Nehemiah to let him know that the walls of Jerusalem have been torn down. This is Nehemiah's hometown, so to speak, just like us being from North Carolina. It's go, you find out something is going on there. You want to go back home and see what's going on. So Nehemiah wanted to go to Jerusalem. He wanted to go there to rebuild the walls because his heritage was actually there. Oh, my bad. Can you turn that air? Oh, I turned the air on. Turn the air off. I turned it off when he was dancing. It was fine. But can you turn it off? So Nehemiah goes to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So when he gets there, he goes, chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. Mm, chapter 2, Nehemiah chapter 2, 12 through 16. And I rose in the night, and I some few men with me, neither told any man what my God had, had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dumb port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates there, thereof were consumed with fire. Amen. Praise God. So here we see, when we get to chapter 2, Nehemiah has gone before the king and his wife and brought his petition to go and rebuild the walls, but he did not go without their permission or their blessings upon him. How many times have we gone and did something that God didn't give us permission to do? We didn't seek anyone's counsel. We just did it because we grown. I do what I want to do. I know I've done it. I don't know if anybody else has done it, but I've done it. And there was nothing fruitful about it. It actually turned into a big flop. So when we, what we see here, the Bible says in Romans 13, obey them that have rule over you. This talks about the consequences when we are disobedient to those in authority over us. So yeah. Nehemiah takes off on his quest to go rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, does something very unusual when he gets there. He, re, he starts to pray. He had a plan and he sought God before he left. So everything he does after this falls right into place because he... He couldn't um, because he included God in his plan. Yes. I'm looking at verse 9, and it says, When I arrived in the provinces west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letters to the governors there. The king, I should add, has sent along army officers and troops to protect me. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and Ammonite, who was a government official, heard of my arrival, they were very angry that anyone was interested in helping Israel. Now, he hasn't even started doing anything yet, and they already mad. Mad, mad. They already mad. He hasn't even started the building yet, but they are already mad. So that lets us know that even though we're not where we need to be right now, we got enemies. And they mad. We don't even know what they're mad about. We just know they're mad. Because we're in the presence of the Lord. We're in the will of God. We're in the word of God. We're doing what God has called us to do. And that's going to bring you some enemies. You don't have to do anything. Other than just be a part of the kingdom. Yeah. Tell it. Praise God. Don't get excited. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I heard you cheating. <laughs> so Nehemiah goes, he was, so we have a tendency to blame everything on the devil when it is us who have not been properly trained. We have not sought God. We go off on an assignment that is out of timing, being disobedient, but determined we will make things work. Maybe a bad marriage, a business deal, or maybe just something we are determined we want to do. The word of God tells us in Psalms 37 and 23 that the steps of a righteous man, a good man, woman, are ordered of the Lord. Habakkuk 3, 2 through 3 tells us to write the vision and make it plain, but we have absolutely nothing on paper. We just plan it by ear. We're going to take this turn. If we get to this turn and feel like a good way, any, mean, man, and more, we're going to go that way. Or we're going to go this way. Because now we just not listening to God, we listening to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So in Proverbs 26 and 2, pretty much what that says is that a curse causes does not come. What that means is when we are doing the right thing, we don't have to worry about something or someone uh, sneaking up on us and messing things up. Because right. we can bring a, cur a curse on ourselves. When we fail to consult God, when we open our mouth and speak words over our own selves, when people speak words over us, they can bring a curse on us. And that's what Nehemiah is looking at. That place had been cursed. Yeah. Mm. 
This place has been cursed. Had, not has, had been cursed. The Holy Spirit revealed it to me. See, I'm off my message now. Because I'm talking to you guys. The place had been cursed. God said rebuild the walls. Everybody wasn't on your side. So the seats that you see empty need to be empty because the people that's coming need somewhere to sit. Amen. They don't need to have to fight over a seat because yeah. this is my seat Come and you're on. not sitting yeah. here. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to take this back to a Sunday morning when a particular seat was there and yeah. there was an argument about a seat. See, yeah. that's the trick of the enemy. That's trick. But that's another story. That's another story. And anybody that was here, and I don't think it was but us three, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So as we look at a wall, a wall is built to enclose or divide an area of land. It can keep predators out, and it also can keep people in. Amen. Or as a verb, endorsed to as to protect or allow for privacy. A wall can be seen as a source of imprisonment and division, or is often referred to as things we need to break, allow, excuse me, things we need to break down and overcome. Sometimes we can put up our own walls. We can put a wall in our mind, like you yes, said this right. morning. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying when y'all was speaking, y'all was in the message. So that lets me know that we're on time with God and his word and what yes. he's doing. Because he's not going to make up anything. No. The word is the word. Yes. The same time last year probably was the same word. It just came in a different way because that's the way God is. Mm -hmm. He comes in different ways. He doesn't come the same way every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. So a wall in the Bible is seen as structures that protect, provide, and represent a place of shelter, forming a sense of belonging, which we all want to feel like we belong someplace. No one wants to be somewhere and feel left out. That's right. They want to come in knowing they're loved and needed where they are. We don't want to just get in to fit in. We want to be in. We want to fit. Yes, right. You don't want to try to go over here and take your uh, take her phone, and I know she don't. Ha I, she got an iPhone. I don't know if she got an iPhone Absolutely. or not. But somebody with an iPhone, and I'm trying to take my plug and stick it in your phone. It's not gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. So why try to put something in something to make it fit if it don't work? Don't work. If you're someplace and you're trying don't to fit in work. with somebody, and the Lord is telling you move out of that place because you don't fit here, get out. Get on. That's all you got to do. That's right. You don't fit there. That's they don't right. want you there. But you're there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. So when we get to Nehemiah 3, we're not going to read any parts of that because everybody is in position and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And what they've been instructed to do. The project is going very well. Then here come the devil. So it's just like him. It's just like him to slide in just when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's up to us to get past the point. So we must pass the test. For us to get where we need to be, we will be tested by God. You're not being tested mm -hmm. by the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy ain't trying to test you. He, he, he don't even have. He don't even have the intelligence to test you. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> Just like when you were in in school and the teacher came up with a test, they were testing you to see what you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But see, God is not testing you to see what you know. God tests you for a particular reason. I'm not going to go into that right now. But for us to get where we need to be, we will be tested by God. And the enemy is going to try to push you off the wall. Oh, yeah. But you must do as that's Nehemiah did and it. go to God. Don't go to Facebook. Don't go to your neighbor's house. Nope. Don't go down the street. Don't go to the store. Don't go to anyone but God. Because he has a plan for all of us. And when we get instructions from heaven, the instructions are specific and they must be followed to the last. Hey. If you look at chapter 3, Nehemiah told them everything they needed to do. And I'm not going to read it. As I said, he had everybody in place. He called them out by name and said what they were doing and what, what tribe. I, I want to say tribes. It's not really tribes. But they all had gates that they were repairing at that time. So he had specifically given them instructions as to what they were going to be doing. Three facts you always want to remember. 
People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. The devil does not waste his time attacking people who are not doing anything. God tests us to teach us to purify us from the temptation of yeah. being full of yeah. ourselves. Mm -hmm. He got to burn up self. He got to get us out of ourselves to get us to where we need to be so that yes, we are Lord. hearing from him the instructions that he's given yes, us Lord. to do whatever it is that we have to do. My, my, my. And just like I was saying, when we were in school, the teacher would give you a test to determine how much you, what you knew. The more you knew, the better your grade. But guess what? With God, there is no grade. You're going to keep repeating that same test over and over again until you get it right. And once you get that right, then you can move You can move forward. So God already knows how much you know. He already knows how much you don't know. And the test is not for him. The test is for us to learn about us and to learn about him. Because a lot of us don't know ourselves. We don't know don't what we would do in a particular You're situation. Right. Right. When I stood there at that cash register yesterday and I looked at that dude with them plaques <laughs> on his head and I stood there talking like he was on something. It, it really it said something to my spirit. But I couldn't say what I wanted to say, what I was thinking in my mind, like you say, because sometimes you think in your mind to say something. But I said, you know what, Lord? I'm a representative of the kingdom and I'm not going to yes. let the devil take me there. Yeah. Because we have young people these this day and time, they have no training. They're on jobs. They have no compassion. They have no, how would you say, knowledge of how to talk to people. Because they haven't been taught. They haven't been trained. So they're doing what they do. And they come into a, a professional business, so to speak. And they bring their street jargon. Yeah, back to the jargon. And they come into the business. And you make the business look bad to me. Yes. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but when I look at stuff, there's a professional way to, to carry yourself, right. but there's also a way that looks ignorant to me because you haven't taken the time to educate yourself to know how to talk to people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's bad for business. And it's the same way in the kingdom because we got a lot of people that have not trained themselves to speak the language of the kingdom and they're still doing stuff in themselves they have not been trained properly trained trained so to speak yeah. to represent the kingdom that's right and that's why people are turned away because you in the pulpit with your foolishness and they looking at you and saying to themselves if this is what god is all about oh, i don't no, want no, no parts of them mm -hmm. no, no. <laughs> excuse me oh, we make god look weak and that's yeah. what Nehemiah was thinking. The people were making god look weak like he couldn't rebuild the wall so he had to go and represent because he knew that God was not a weak God. Yeah. My Lord. Jesus. I'm trying to make it through this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And even God looks at our attitude. Yes. When we're in the middle of something. When you're going through something, God is looking at our attitude. Yes. Our attitude in the middle of the what? test will determine whether we will be refined like gold well. by the process. Or whether we will become hard like steel. Mm. God wants to take our hearts of flesh and turn them into heart. He wants to take our stony hearts and make them out of hearts of flesh. A fleshly heart is just that. It's in the flesh. So it can feel things. When your heart is hard and you're not listening to anyone and people trying to tell you stuff, when you become hard-hearted like that, it does God no justice whatsoever. He gets absolutely nothing out of a person that has a hard heart because they've gone through stuff in life and they have not learned how to go through with a good attitude. And that's why they stay in the place where they are for a longer period of time because they don't know how to go through that's right in victory mm -hmm. yeah amen it's not what we know that counts but what we do with what we know Hallelujah. remember there is no grade during or after the test but if we don't pass we will keep taking the test until we get it right and that's then right. we can move on we don't want to be another children of Israel story. I talk about the children of Israel all the time because they were so slowful in getting where they needed to get. 40 years on an 11 day years. journey is what they took. Mm -hmm. And that's a long time. That's a long we don't want to be here at Greater New Hope 40 years when we could have been there two months ago. Yeah. Two years ago, two weeks ago, two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Because that's not what God requires of us. Still right here. There are three areas that God tests us in. First place he tests you in is your heart. 
First Chronicles 29 and 17. Someone get James 1 and 2 through 3. And someone get Exodus 16 and 4. First Chronicles, 1 First Chronicles 29 and 17. James 1, 2 through 3. Exodus 16 and 4. Exodus 16 and 4. 1 Chronicles 29 and 17. I know also, my God, that thou treest the heart and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all things. And now have I seen the joy of thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. Amen. Oh, that, this 17? This 17, okay. yes, sir. That right there, that's David. Hmm. David is willingly. talking. And he says, I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. David was a man after God's heart. He touched the heart of God. Yeah. Even in his mess, which lets mm -hmm. us know you can still be the way you are, but touch God's heart because your heart is in the right place. That even though he made some mistakes, he didn't stay in those mistakes and he didn't keep making excuses sure for why he couldn't get to where he needed to be. He got there. Yes, he did. Because he trusted God. Yeah. And even though he wasn't allowed to, to build the temple, Solomon was. This was his prayer. He was praying for his son Solomon as he was going into, as they were transitioning for the change. He was praying for his son Solomon. Amen. Amen. So this lets us know, as I stated to you earlier, that God tests us in our heart. The fall that pride goes before is something God allows to purify us from the temptation again to be full of ourselves. The minute we think we can live without God, he searches our heart. And if there is no humility there, God allows us to hit rock bottom. So we can see things from a new and different perspective. Yes, ma'am, and so have I. It's not God's way of torturing us, but it's a process of purification of our hearts so that we can see him. Matthew 5 and 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Sometimes God will allow something to knock us down so that we can be in the right position. When you get knocked down, you're going to fall either on your face or you're going to fall on your knees. It's going to be one or the other. But he knows how to get you just like the police tell you. Assume the position. He knows how to get you in the right position. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost Hallelujah. He knows. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly how to do what needs Thank to be done. Thank you. James 1 and 2 through 3. My brother, greetings. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into verse trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory. Let me read that in this version. I kind of like the way that sounds. Because a lot of us don't have patience. People always tell you don't pray for patience because you're going to be waiting a long time. Ask the Lord to show you how to be patient. Don't ask for patience because you may be waiting on a husband for a long time. <laughs> Trying to get a job for a long time. Don't ask for patience, okay? <laughs> for James 1. Yes. It says, dear brothers, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy. For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. It says, so let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you'll be ready for anything strong in character, full and complete. See, God is not trying to make you popular. He's trying to build character in you because you represent the kingdom. 
And just like I said earlier, when we see these young people and they put them on the front line and tell them to go stand and wait on people and they don't even know how to put a verb and a noun together to make a sentence and they sound really ridiculous when you're talking to them like they're so unintelligent, I'm not judging them, but what I'm saying is they're representative of a company. And when you come in there, if the service is good, you're more likely to go back. If the service is not that great, you are determined, okay, I'm never going back to that place. Yeah. You're going to get on Facebook, post about that little corner store down there. Don't go in there, girl, because that girl in there, she all ghetto, and she all on her phone with her yeah. fingernails, and all she's thinking about is her hair. You understand? Mm -hmm. This yeah. I'm trying to make it real, because this is what it is. Yes. Yeah. This is how God looks at us. How are we representing the kingdom? What are we saying to people when we come across them, and how are we approaching them as we're trying to win them? With loving kindness have I drawn them. He didn't beat them across the head with the Bibles. He didn't tell them the do's and the don'ts. He didn't tell you, you know what, you gay and you need to get saved. No, God loves you like you are, but he's not pleased with what you do. That's how you tell them. You approach them approachably in a way that you can minister to them. Thank you. You can't just go and tell them what they can and cannot do. They don't know the word. They've never been saved. Never. And even if they have, they walked away from faith. They walked away from the faith. But God said he's married to the backslider. Uh -huh. So he's waiting for them to come back. They're coming back. There you go. When our faith is tested, do we trust God to provide? Or do we take it out on others or come up with our own plan? Is how we going to work this thing out? How we going to get out of this mess that we made? Because yes. God didn't make the mess. Mm -hmm. We made it. When God is testing us, it is a time that he is trying, excuse me, to show us where changes need to be made. Yeah. We need to make some changes. We need to change our attitude. Yeah. It's not talking about your hair. I can change wigs all week. I can change the wig up the wig. I can hold, go a whole two, three months. That's how many wigs I have. I can look different every day. But if my heart ain't in it. If I'm not right, the wig is not going to make me look any different if I'm tainted on the inside because man is looking at the outside. God is looking at the heart. Hey. Whenever God gives me a, a message, Lord, what do you want? What are you saying to me? The only way God can lead you, and you hear people say this all the time, if God is leading you, to a place where you've never been before. That's a prophetic word that I've heard so many people speak over other people. The only way God can lead you to where you've ne been, never been is to call you out of where you are to a new place in your life that requires a pure heart, yeah, faith, and the third thing it requires is obedience. If you become fearful and bitter during the process, you delay the blessings of God. It takes longer for him to move on your behalf, spending more time in a place like the children of Israel than is necessary. Yep. For years, I used to wonder. I used to hear Creflo Dollar say it all the time when I first started going to church and going, and going back to church because I was already in the church. But I walked away from God. And I had to find out that because people was always saying, oh, when you get saved, it's going to be this, that. No, it was nothing like what they said. It was pure tea hell. And I don't know why they stood behind the pulpit and told that big lie because all they wanted me to do was put my money in the bucket and keep it moving. If I had a problem, they wasn't concerned about it. If I was hurting, they wasn't concerned about it. I even went to a church where I had put my money in the bucket because our lights was off and we put more money in the bucket than the church did. They weren't concerned about our lights. We had to go other places and come up with the money the best way we could because they were not concerned. But just like I said this morning, we serve a God that is concerned. Riding down the highway, dialing 911. Why is nobody answering the phone on a 911 call? Why? And then you pick up the phone. Hello. Like you're so unconcerned. I could have been on the highway stretched out in the middle of the street because this man driving crazy. But you pick up the phone like you're so unconcerned. Thank God he's not like that towards us. Hallelujah. That's right. It will come Hallelujah, Jesus. I mean, it was just the way she answered the phone. And I couldn't get mad at her. So I kind of was, I kind of changed my, my, my attitude before she picked up the phone. Was like, what kind of, what kind of people are these? Why are y'all not answering the phone? 
it's just my, I, I just, I didn't understand that. It, it blew my mind. But anyway, the third thing is our obedience. Go ahead. Amen. Exodus 16 and 4. Um, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people should go out and gather a certain yeah, rain yeah, yeah. every 16. day. Hmm? 16 and 4. What you read? Exodus 16 and 4. Chapter, verse 4. Mm -hmm. It says there, hold on. Exodus. Make sure I got the right one. King James. You got, okay. Go ahead. Exodus 16. Chapter 16, verse 4. Chapter 16, verse 4. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, okay, yeah, yeah, there you go. I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my mm -hmm. law or no. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Sorry about that. I was on the back, the end of the it's verse. Okay. That's okay. But in this, <laughs> in this verse, and I got to get out this verse because I love my King James. It said, then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for them. Everyone can go out each day and gather as much food as he needs. Amen. And I will test them in this to That's see good, whether man. they will follow my instructions or not. You guys heard Chief in the Spirit this morning talking about the man. I, I don't know who he was talking to, but he was just going in. But anyway, he was. I was listening. I was like, okay, he all in my message. But the thing with that is when God tests us, he's trying to get us. Prove yourself to me. I need you to prove yourself to me. Do you, how bad do you want what you asking me for? You want me to heal you? How bad do you want it? You want your church filled? How bad do you want it? Yeah. Are you willing to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and come down here and spend time with me? Get in my presence and tell yeah. me what you want. Or you're going to keep telling everybody else what you want. But you ain't told me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the God we serve. He asks us questions. Because yeah. he's sitting right there saying, I've given them, I've given them everything they need. Yeah. I'm the great I am. Yes. And they trust in everybody but me. My, my, my. Mm. Mm. Ooh, we are told so many times in the Ooh. Bible to obey, but we come up with a reason not to follow the rules. We make up our own rules or we just skip the rules altogether and go along with whatever situation we are in. The Bible clearly tells us, for I know, I know. me, God, I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. I know where that man at. I know where he at. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I know where he at. I, you know, I got, to t I got to go there. I know the plans I have for you. I have good plans for you. I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to make you successful. Yes. I'm going to bring you the right one. Yes, he is. And he's going to respect you. That's because I sent him. Yeah. To you. Yeah. Hold on. It'll be all worldly. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh, oh, my God. Hallelujah. Yes. That was especially for you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us it's not good Thank you, Jesus. For man right. or woman That's right. to be alone. It's not good. It's not good. He's going to do that for you because he sees your heart. But you got to do what you got to do for him first. Number one. Amen. Ah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. You got to do for him. Thank you, Lord. Got to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, Ooh, we read it all the time, but we don't completely believe it. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Because if we did, we would find the tents few and far in between as God allows us to enter the land that's flowing with milk and honey, the man of land of promises that He told us because the word of God tells us in uh first Corinthians, second Corinthians 1 and 20 that all the promises of God are yes and in him amen if he's already promised you what he's promised you then why are you still asking and begging and looking and seeking and knocking when he's already given it's at your fingertips 
All you got to do is assume the position, reverse the curse, and stay on the wall. God is listening in this hour. Don't come down. Hallelujah. Don't come down. Don't come down. See, I heard what Chief heard. Thank you, Father God. This convocation is going to be different. Show up. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. We may not make it through preaching. Thank you, Lord. We may not even make it past praise and worship. That's right. But it's okay. It's okay. Because God is refining his hey, people. Hey, glory. He's redefining them. Yes. He's creating in them a clean heart yes. and renewing with them a right within them a right spirit because yes. so many people have gone off on a tantrum and they don't recognize they out of the will of God. They do what they want to do because it's what they want to do and God is not in it. Show me in it. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus, this is not in my message, Holy Spirit. Come on, come on, mm. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We got to hear it. We got to hear it. Thank you, my Lord. We must. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Thank you. Holy Spirit, subject to change. I'm That it's uncomfortable when we're going through. Mm -hmm. But we have to go through. In order to get to, we have to go through. Gotcha. We have to. Yes. It's just not a way to get away from it. Yeah. Mm. 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 Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Mm. Oh, well, as we go to Nehemiah 4, which is my text for today. Glory. Uh, if I can get myself together, I'm going to find it. <laughs> and I'm going to read it. <laughs> like, you reading out of um, King James oh Version? Mm -hmm. Nehemiah 4. She don't know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Drop me this fellas. Hey, 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 hey. Glory. Hallelujah. Gl glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey. Nehemiah 4. Thank you. Woo. God of us. Word. God, bring it out. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That would destroy all of your Ooh. word. Yes. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way with your daughter, Lord. Yeah, my son, dear, I sit in your own side. Speak through, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. So the wall. Ah. Ooh, again, reverse the curse. Reverse it. Reverse Stay on the wall. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, Sambalat was very angry. But this is the living Bible. Yes. When he learned that we were rebuilding the wall, he flew into a rage and insulted and mocked us and laughed at us, and so did his friends and the Samaritan army officers. What does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they are doing? Feeble. He scoffed. Do they think they can build a wall in a day if they offer enough sacrifices? And look at those charred stones they are pulling out of the rubbish and using again. Burn. They said, look at Greater New Hope over there with Chief Apostle and Apostle Ann. Look at the condition of that building on the inside. What they think they're doing? They don't even have enough people to even take up on $5 offering on a Sunday morning. I'm just being real. I'm just telling you what I heard in the spirit and how they're talking and, and how God is moving because the word of God tells us in Psalms 23 that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're going to go through but we ain't going to stay there. He's preparing a table before us uh, in the presence of our enemies uh, and they watching us because uh, they come curious about what's going on over there in Greater New Hope. Why they ain't on the radio station no more? What's happening over there? They ain't even got enough money uh, on a Sunday morning to keep the building up and going. But little do they know that our God is the great I am and everything we need. He's already prolonged. Yes. Yes. Already gave it to us. He's already provided. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Ooh, we have the Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, our patience. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Hey. Tobiah. 
My who was standing God. beside him remarked, if even a fox walked around the top of their wall, it would collapse. That's how weak it was. Mm -hmm. Then I prayed, hear me, O Lord God, for we are being mocked. Mm -hmm. May their scoffing fall back upon their own heads. Yeah. May they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Mm. Do not ignore oh, their oh, sin. Oh, do not blot it out, for they have despised you in despising us who are building your wall. They have despised us here at Greater New Hope because we didn't let them come in, do what they wanted to do, and be who they wanted to be. Because it was not their time, but they wanted to come in and take over. And God said, not in this house. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. That woman ain't holy. That's what he said in the spirit realm. As I saw them come in the door, as they walked behind the pulpit, and some of them wouldn't even come close to the pulpit because they were not holy. Yes. This is holy ground. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hey. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, God. Oh. At last, the wall was completed to half its original height around the entire city, for the workers worked hard. People had a mind to work. Built that wall. God said, when you take care of my house first, yes. I'll take care of your house. Thank you, Lord. Nehemiah was disturbed when he heard the walls were in ruins because, again, it reflected the weakness of the people. And what they were saying to God is, Lord, you can't do this. They could have shut this place down when everybody walked out. But they kept going. Ah, they kept trusting God. And we ought to draw our strength from God. When we don't trust him, he has to test us, which for some of us is very uncomfortable, especially when we don't know God, ah, but especially when we don't know ourselves. Jesus. When Sanballat, Tobias, and Gershom came up against Nehemiah, they did not attack him with weapons came at him with words. But he still would not come down off the wall. He had nothing to prove to them. So he was able to stay on that wall for 52 days and rebuild. Wow. Yes, Lord. God can and does use walls to bring him glory. Amen. Nehemiah manifested his vision before the enemy. Just like I said, he prepares a table before us in the presence, presence of our enemies. Yes, we do. The enemy uses the same tactics today. Yes. Word warfare. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us about it. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 10 and 4 and 5. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. Yeah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt Amen. itself against the knowledge of God. Yes, Lord. Sticks and stones may break my bones. But words. They say words can't hurt me, but yes, they can. Yeah. That's not a true statement at all. Oh. The words that people speak over us mm -hmm. and the words that we speak over ourselves do much damage to us. It's called a word curse. And just like cancer, if it's left untreated, it will spread throughout your body. The next thing you want to figure out, why am I so spiritually distraught? Why am I going through all of this? Why do I feel this way? Because somebody spoke something over you or you spoke something over yourself that caused you to have that cancer in your body that's causing you to feel that way. And it's not a physical cancer. It's a spiritual cancer. And it will eat away at your anointing. Yes, it will. The only intervention in the natural realm, and Chief was talking about this this morning, is the doctors and medication, therapy, whatever they prescribe, that's the doctor. That's their remedy. The only intervention in the spiritual realm is God. That's right. Amen. And he trumps all doctors and yeah. medicine and therapy. That doesn't tell you don't take the medicine. That doesn't tell you don't do what you gotta do. You have to do what you have to do. God is in the midst of all of it. All of it. We have examples sitting right here. Apostle Neil herself, Chief Apostle himself, myself, Edie. Everybody in here has a testimony of how God has kept us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I mean, yes, ma'am. 
And I'll be asserted in. God is our healer, and he can work through the medication yes, and yes, the doctors. Yes, yes, yes he, he can. can. And he's doing it. The only response that Nehemiah had was, I will not come down I won't off the come wall. Down. Why? Because he had nothing to prove to his enemies. <laughs> and we have nothing to prove either. No, we don't have anything to prove to people on Facebook mm -hmm. by posting anything that's going on in this church. Well, let's right. keep it in this church. church. They're not getting anything out of it anyway. Mm -hmm. If we have invitations that we want to send out, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Anything else other than that, I don't even want to be braggadocious about it. Mm -hmm. Come okay. see if you want to know what's going on. No. Come see it for yourself because you won't get anything out of me. That's how the people out there are looking in here trying to figure out what's going on over there at that little teeny place. Mm -hmm. They got to be shut down by now. Mm. You know what it's like, uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> ah, lights on. Man. Nehemiah stayed committed to rebuilding the wall, even though his enemies grew in numbers. He never stopped working. He started out with three enemies. I think he ended up with more than that. By the time he finished rebuilding, probably the whole town was against him. Yes. The whole Facebook is looking. They're on YouTube. Where are they at? We haven't seen them. They're not on the radio station. I keep hearing people asking me, "Oh, y'all not on the radio anymore?" No. When God get ready for us to go back, we will be back. Because we are coming back. Oh, yeah, we'll be back. With a vengeance. Yes, we are. But it will be God's vengeance. It won't be ours. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah was determined to reverse the curse that Sambalat tried to use on him to stop him from rebuilding. He stayed the course and finished the work as he prayed to God and inquired of him. Before he took on the project, he already had prayed. He didn't wait to get in the project and start praying. He prayed before he got there. Yeah. Yeah. And the enemy was already there waiting for him before yeah. he even started doing anything. Right there. And I want to tell you about a man. And his name is Jesus. That's the man. Yeah. And he came up against the same kind of ridicule. Yes. They mocked him. They spit on him. They did everything they could. But he yeah. still would not come down off that cross. Won't come down. Isaiah 53. Somebody get that for me. Jesus had a mission to fulfill. He had a wall to repair, so to speak. Our relationship with God needed to be repaired. Isaiah 53. The wall had been ruined and there was a divide. And his mission was to fix the leak and repair the wall. Amen. Bring us back to Christ. Amen. Bring Thank us back Lord. to God. Isaiah 53. Yes, ma'am. 53. Yes, ma'am. Who has our report? That Who has to lead our report? Yes. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's it. For he shall grow up before him. Mm as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness, and when he and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Mm -hmm. He he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows mm -hmm. and acquainted with grief with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely we have borne, surely he has borne our grief and carried carried our sorrows. Right. Yet we yet we did esteem him stricken, mm. smitten of God and afflicted. Mm. But he was wounded for our transgression. Hallelujah. Yeah. He was bruised for our iniquity. Thank you, Jesus. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So we are healed. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you. So are healed. Hallelujah. Thank with his stripes. We with his stripes. Yeah, yeah, they already had told us he was coming. And I want to read this from this version. But oh wow, oh how few believe it. Who will listen? To whom will God reveal his saving power? In God's eyes, he was like a tender green shoot sprouting from a root in dry and sterile ground. But in our eyes, there was no attractiveness at all. Nothing to make us want him because they're looking at us. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at him. They were looking at us back then and they're looking at us right now. And they didn't find anything that was attractive enough for them to come to the church because we didn't look too good to them. Yeah. So that's why they didn't come. 
And it says, we despise, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with bitterest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we didn't care. We want to come up with another kind of religion. Oh my. We want to make up our own and forget about Jesus on the cross. We want to celebrate Christmas and call it what we want to call it, make it commercialize it, and tell everybody happy new. Instead of telling everybody Merry Christmas, they want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. They want to take Christ out of the equation. Merry Xmas. Yet it was our grief he bore, our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. But he didn't have any sins. He was wounded and bruised for our sins. Yeah. He was chastised that we might have peace. He was lashed and we were healed. We are the ones who strayed away like sheep. We who left God's path to follow our own. Yet God laid on him the guilt and sin of every of one of us. All. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he never said a word. How many of us, when we go through, we get a pain? Oh my God, my back is hurt. I said it yesterday. I climbed up on that ladder bad as my foot was hurting. Oh, God, I thank you. Hey! Mm. You press. You press your way. Thank you, God. You press your way. But thank God for somebody that had my back that didn't have a knife in my back. Because otherwise, there's no telling where I would have been. Probably laying on the floor trying to pick myself up. But God gives us people in our lives that have our back. That want to help us get to the place where he wants us to be. It's up to us as a people of faith. And when I tell you I'm standing here today, no pain at all. Back pain. Gone, foot pain gone, ankle pain in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I've already been declared as healed. And if I get a pain, I dare not complain because God stayed on that cross. Jesus stayed on that cross and took the beating, He took the bruising so that I could stand up here today and let you know what you're going through is nothing compared to what He went through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. He'll take it away. Thank you, God. So you put him first. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It says, from prison and trial, they led him away to his death. Yes. But who among the people of that day realized it was their sins that he was dying for? That he was suffering their punishment. He was buried like a criminal in a rich man's grave. But he had done no wrong and had never spoken an evil word. I heard Apostle talking about this morning, Apostle Neil, and she was talking about how she used to be and how you had to fight. And this day and time, you do have to fight. But they're not fighting. They're killing. They're not trying to fight you. They're trying to take you out. And that's the trick of the enemy to take this next generation. And they've fallen right into the trap. Why? Because they don't have Jesus in their lives. They have no clue who Jesus is because they have not been taught. And when we are taught what we know, we take what we know and we take it to somebody else so that somebody can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that my God is real. If he saved me here, if he delivered me here, if he kept me here from being in a devil's hell, if he picked me up out of the street when I was about to go up out of here, then he can do the same for you. Amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Our God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. It's an awesome God. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh God, I thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Yet it was the Lord's good plan to bruise him and fill him with grief. So if it was the Lord's plan, Mm. what did it say? It was the Lord's plan. The Lord's plan. To bruise him, fill him with grief. But when his soul had been made an offering for sin, then shall he shall have a multitude of children, many heirs. He shall live again. We are those heirs. And if God put him to grief, that was some grief there. Why would he want us to ride in on a nice Honda? Not a Honda. I want to say, what was that car? A Lamborghini. Jesus rode on a donkey. Yeah. Why would he want us to be riding around in stuff? That we ain't work for. Uh You just sat back and collected somebody else's whatever to get to where you are, but you ain't been through nothing. You went to college and got an education to stand behind the pulpit and exegete the scriptures, but did you go through anything to get to where you are? Have you been through the fire? Have you been tested and found out that there is pure gold on the inside of you? When you've been through all hell and back, have you discovered... Hey. The price. 
price that Jesus paid for us. Thank you, Lord. Jesus paid the price. Yes, he did. He did. And we're not going to sit on no throne and act like we kings and queens, even though we are described in the Bible as being such. We are heirs to the throne, but you won't go through something to get there. It ain't just going to fall in your lap. He's going to bless you as you bless him. Yes, Lord. This thing is conditional. Yes, if you are willing and obedient, you will yes. eat the good of the land. Yes. You're not just going to eat the good of the land just because you ask somebody, just because you read your word and say, I, the Bible tells me, uh, the Bible tells me a whole lot of things. Uh, and I got to recognize uh, when it's God talking uh, and when it's the enemy talking. I got to prove myself to God. I got to prove myself to man. They already know who I am. Yes. They didn't like me then and they don't like me now. But you know what? It really don't matter. Because sometimes I don't even like myself. But I've learned how to live with it. Because I serve a God that's able to do the exceeding and the abundant. He sits down on the inside of me and he changes me from the inside to the outside. Hey, come on. That's our God. That's our God. Yes. Nobody else God. When I tell y'all, this is a prerequisite. Hallelujah. I ain't bent over like this because I'm hurt. I'm bent over like this because I'm hurt. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. This is the soulless realm. And God is taking us someplace in this season. And it's coming in through this realm right here. In the name of Jesus. Woo, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everybody want to be famous. Yeah. Everybody want to get to the top, but don't nobody want to do the climbing. They just want to go straight to the top. We're not going to get in the elevator. We're going to get in that thing that's just going to shoot us straight up. And we're going on about our business, but not in this season. God said you're going to prove yourself on the step where you are, or you will not go any further until you have proven yourself to me. You don't have to prove yourself to man. You got to prove yourself to God. You keep trying to tell people and trying to make people believe and trying to help them hear what it is that you're trying to say. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church through you. Because God is speaking through you in this season. And he's going to use you for his glory. And if he can't get the glory, guess what? You ain't going to get none either. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank he made history yes. and told a story that no one else can ever duplicate. Yes, mm. Glory. Right. We get full of ourselves you. and think our situation is unique or worse than someone else's. Go to your Bible and read the word. Yeah. And you will see that little bit of stuff that you is going through, that you're going through, that you are going through. It's a light affliction. It ain't nothing compared to what Jesus went through. He is acquainted with our grief, according to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And I just want to say that in my closing, reverse the curse and stay on the wall. Stop letting people persuade you of stuff that's not even God. They're telling you all kinds of lies and trying to make you think that they're somebody special and they got some kind of a different kind of anointing wow. than somebody else. They don't know no more than somebody else does. God has given us all a measure of faith. Yeah. And we ought to conduct ourselves in a way that is pleasing to him. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. We keep trying to prove ourselves. 
ourselves. This, as I said, is a prerequisite. It's coming up on this convocation. And God told me, deliver this message. Set the stage. So yeah. Tim, you was in the right vein. Yeah. I wasn't trying to shut you down. I was just saying you was in my message. And if you would have kept talking, we would have discovered that God was speaking to us through you as you were delivering the message. It don't matter how it comes. Everybody, just like Apostle Neil said, don't deliver the message the same way. Some do it this way. Some do it another way. Some do it kind of quiet. Some do it hard. Some don't do it at all. All they do is sit. And they don't say a word. But it don't mean that God ain't with them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You don't put a label on nobody in this season. We got to prove ourselves to God. This week right here, I want to warn y'all. If you miss it, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. Get lotted dotted everybody out your way and tell them I got to get to the house of God. Because if I tell you, when I tell you the power of God is getting ready to fall in this house this week right here. Oh, Jesus, because we've had a changing of the guards. Yes, we did. The season has changed. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is ready yes. to minister to everybody yes. that's looking to be ministered to. Yes. We're in a season right now where the holidays are coming. And people are depressed and don't know which way to go. God got to prepare us. So we got to prove ourselves. Can you carry this anointing that I'm putting on you? Are you able to walk in the name of Jesus with the level of the understanding of the word that I placed inside? you that when you walk by people in this season just the anointing that is on your life is going to bring healing deliverance and salvation when you go through you're going to get to the place in this season where god is going to use you in yes. a mighty way but you got to get in position hallelujah assume the position thank you jesus reverse the curse thank you Lord. stay on the wall oh my oh my thank you god God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. There was ever a time Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. that we need God. Amen. That time is now. Because yes. with all this stuff that's getting ready to come, it hasn't even hit yet. And if you don't have any strength, if you don't have any power, it's going to be just like Gershon said. If a fox come and blow on your wall, it's going to blow your mind. It's probably going to take your mind. If you're not in your right mind. That's why the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If there was ever a time for us to change our direction. To change our thinking. To change our way of living. To change our way of talking. To change our way of walking. If there was ever a time that we needed to change. That time is now. The Holy Spirit is here. He's in the earth right now. He's looking for somebody that's ready to be invested. Somebody that's ready to invest themselves. Somebody Somebody that's ready to prove themselves. Somebody that's ready to give up everything and everybody and say, God, I'm going to follow you. For God, I live and for God, I die. It's time out for making excuses. It's time out for running here, there, and everywhere. Trying to do something that God ain't called you to do. Go back and get the training. If you got to go back to school, go back to school. Do whatever you got to do to get what you need for the season that you're going into. Because again, gotcha. The hour exactly. has come. And now is. It is now. A true worship. We've been in church long enough. Yes. Putting on a show. Ooh. Hopping and hooping and screaming and hollering and jumping and dancing and God ain't in it. Just like the little thing I told you guys about. It was supposed to be comical, but it was real. But the devil was sitting outside the church. The Lord came and asked him, why are you sitting out here? He said, because they keep lying on me. So he went outside of the church. Because everything was the devil, the devil, the devil. He does not have that kind of power. That's right. He does not have that kind of influence. He's uneducated and ignorant. He was kicked out of heaven because he was stupid enough, and that's why I call him ignorant. You were stupid enough to think that you could take your throne and raise it above God. What kind Something of else. ignorance are you dealing with? That's true. Mm. That's just ignorant all day long. Yeah. Mm. 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 And it's the same today that it was then. He's still mm. out there. The Holy Spirit is looking for bodies, but so is the devil. He's roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for exactly the same thing because he knows that his time is almost up. And he needs to get somebody to go with him. Please don't let it be you. Amen.
please don't let it be me. Please don't let it be us. Because we here at Greater New Hope, we hold ourselves to a higher standard in God because we know that God is able to do the exceeding yes, and the abundant. Is. This church is a living miracle. Yes. 82 years celebrating of the convocation. And even though I wasn't there, I can only imagine the anointing that started this whole thing. Amen. 82 years. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this word on today, God. I thank you, Father, thank you, because you are thank such you, an awesome Jesus. God. You have a way of making things plain. And God, we thank you, Lord, that in this season, you're not doing something absolutely new, but God, you're doing the same thing, Father God, but you're requiring of us to do something different. Yes, so Father, Lord. change our hearts and change our minds and change our ways and change us, Father God. We need to change our atmosphere, Lord God. We need to change our friends, change our location. Whatever we need to do in this season, God, bring the change. Bring the Lord. That is needed. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So that we can prove ourselves to you and to you only. Yes. Allow us in this season to stay on the wall. Mm. Yes. To continue to call on your name, yes. Father. For yes, there is Lord. no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved yes, except Lord. for the name of Jesus. Let us not compromise our anointing yes, for Lord. the sake of the world and whatever it is that they are believing, oh God. But that we'll stand firmly, rooted, grounded, and planted in your word in this season. Yes, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is not anything, anything. that the enemy can do to Hello, get us off Lord. the wall. Thank you. So, Father, thank you for allowing us to reverse the curse, to stay on the wall, to rebuild, oh God, and to bring this thing full fruition to the place where you desire that it yes, would be, Lord. No more isms yes, and schisms, Father. Yes, no more lacking and slacking and dragging, Father ah. God, and lagging. But, God, this is a season, oh God, for the manifestation of everything that you have declared over this house. Uh, and we declare by faith right now uh, that it's already done. Uh, every word that was spoken in a negative way, oh God, uh, we tear it down right now yes. in the name of Jesus. And we bury it oh God in the sea of forgetfulness yeah, Father yeah. every word Father God that would take this ministry yeah. to the next level oh God to the next stage to the next step God we receive it right now the engrafted word that's going to move us in yeah. this season yeah. and take us higher in you God yeah. we give you praise Lord and honor for it in advance yeah. Yeah. in Jesus name Jesus. Thank you Lord Thank you Lord Hallelujah Hallelujah. Bless thank your you, name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God. Bless your name. We thank God. Hallelujah. Thank See, y'all ready to pray the side of the church. It's dismissed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank